Hey there, this is a Manhattanite for singlementors.com. Um, we are one of the, I think, the best staking coaching sites there is out there. Um, we work really hard doing videos for our players, um, multiple videos every day, or posts on the forum. And occasionally, you know, because we have a bunch of players, they run into each other at the tables. Um, so this is in the money in a $8.180. We have single mentors one here and single mentors two here. They should know each other's games fairly well. Um, I see a lot more hand histories from this player than this player, but since I do some, so then I do so many videos, I assume they know each other's games, and, uh, you know, I'm sort of, you know, they develop a style that's different but similar, let's say, because, you know, the same, they're getting the coaching from the same coaches, um, although he's getting coaches coaching from slightly different coaching, probably, than he is, just, it's due to nationality, um, he's, um, um, he's from Europe and he is from, uh, Greece. So we have a Greek coach that's giving him a little bit different coaching than he's getting. Um, just because of a nationality language thing. Um, although he speaks good English, so I coach him too, and actually we all do, so it's not fair to say. But he does post less hand histories than this player here. Um, so, and I think this player here reviews a lot more hand histories. So here he min raises and he gets re raised by Benjamin. Um, and this hand really surprised me. And I think it just shows you how bad the players can be here in these tournaments. So our range here is we, we actually just ra min raise the hand before, which was Queen 10. And so when we got it through. Um, although we had been relatively inactive, as you can see before that. Um, so we do, we raise exactly the same amount, I believe. We raise 33.76 there and 3376 there because it's set in our table ninja. So he's raising, um, I guess, three point no two point two or something like that um, is his standard raise. Whatever it is, two point one is his standard raise at this moment. Some players it's min raise, some players slightly more or less. So then we get to the kings and he does the same. And this player somehow three bets, so we, we figure he has a relatively strong range. Um, as a matter of fact, we figure he has you know a very strong range. Um, now sometimes I'll tell players to flat here. Um, in this situation, I think just shoving it in is fine. Um, but it's kind of kind of an interesting thing. So he shoves it in, and this is really shocking because this guy calls, and I don't know what's going through his mind that he thinks that we're playing him or we're bluffing. So when I see this call, I usually think that this is a player that raises wide and will four bet like this. And I might make a note on him because of this, because this is what he calls with. And he's not even close to the realm of where he should be calling or where he should even be. I mean, maybe making the three bet is fine. You know, that's just poker. But the call is just, you know, don't get married to your hand. Um, so that's, that's a big deal. So the very next hand, and again, these players know each other. Now, his min raise range is, first of all, with his stack size the way it is, and there's 3150 in the pot, he's shoving a relatively wide range of hands, um, trying to keep up, um, trying to get to the money with chips. It's shorthanded. So he's shoving a relatively wide range of hands. When he min raises, which he does, you see he, his range is a min raise. His range of hands now is um, much narrower. My mouse is actually having some problems here. His, his range of hands here is much narrower. And this guy decides to do basically the same thing he did. A little more forcefully, he decides to shove. Now, when I was doing this video, earlier, I immediately thought to myself, well, his min-raise range is a trap. A, a, a huge said segment of his min-raise range is, I'm going to th I'm gonna min-raise and call this player with whatever I have. That this is a trap. And that he's shoving, due to his stack size and due to this player's stack size, most other hands. So, like, he's probably shoving queen-10 suited here, which this player had min-raised earlier. Um, he's min-raising all the hands, including aces, and, like, not aces, not ace-ace, but 
ace7, ace8, ace9, ace10. He's min-raising those because he's expecting this player to 3-bet. Because that's what this player would do in this situation. The button, min, the button min raises, and this player is sort of trained, sort of not trained, but sort of trained to be shoving a fairly wide range, including a range that includes, you know, like 8-9 suited in this situation on the, on the, on the final table money bubble. But this player, I think, is just outthinking that and is going to min raise a range that he's going to actually call with. And he does. So he shoves and he calls. And I thought, oh, God, you know, don't do this against a player that you really know. This is not, you know, it's not bad, but I think that he's just not going to be opening with a min raise a range that a shove is going to be good, that he's not going to get called, so you have to actually be bigger. So I don't think he was thinking about it. Then the very next hand, I'm going to show you this whole segment of hand. He didn't win it. So I'll show you this whole stretch of hands. So this is an easy call, right? He has, he's shoving five big blinds. He has ace nine. It's an easy iso shove over this guy. Very easy hand. Um, we lose, you know, he has ace queen, whatever. It's the top of the range. Um, he could have, He should have virtually any two cards here. So he just has the two that we can't we're not going to play well against. So the very next hand, we have ace eight. We, we're down to 24. And what does he do? He shoves them in. That's sort of the range that I was saying before that we're shoving, that we're expecting him to shove starting with like ace eight, ace seven. Actually, I said he could min raise. And I don't even think a min raise here on a call would be bad, except that we don't know these players. So against them, going unexploitable is better. Right? Because we don't know them. He knew who these, that he was. Presumably, this guy just shoved ace-queen, so he's going to be tight, so we're not, you know, not going to marry his three-bet range and his calling range. You're going to be virtually the same. So we might as well shove and put him to the ultimate test and tighten up both ranges significantly. This guy is too short for, him, uh, for it to matter what, how we play the hand. Um, he has no fold equity, so... We expect them to fold, and they both fold. Then this hand, we get pocket nines, and, and this is like the same sort of thing in reverse. So what do we do? We want to be shoved on, right? So we raise our normal, as I said, his raise normal size, is whatever he set Ninja to, which is 4.11 maybe it looks like. Um, so he wants it to look like he has an odd. It doesn't, either is fine. It's, it's, it's not material. And, you know, so this, he's doing the exact same thing, and what happens here is he gets shoved on, you know? And this is what we want. We want one of these players to three-bet shove on us. This is our min-raise range, right? It's not, you know, now if we have queen-10, queen-10 suited might be still part of our min-raise range, but it's really a narrow, like, the min-raise range that we're going to fold is pretty narrow, compared to the min-raise range that we're going to call, and we're shoving most other hands. So we're talking about, like, you know, 75% of the hands we're min-raising, we're calling with, and only 25% we're folding at this stage. And uh, so we, you know, reverse it, and we get, you know, the nice, nice win. So I think that this player should have realized that, and then the very next hand, okay, so we're back. And this is that, now we have chips again, so now, you know, some of that goes out the window. We're min-raising a wider range because we can fold, and this is the actual money bubble. So we're just looking to steal, and now we're going to, you know, we're going to fold. And I think this player, I think, does he lose? Yeah. But yeah, he was just unlucky that he ran to ace-9. Um, but now it's a fine shove because now he knows when we have 60,000 chips, our min-raise range widens out to, like, you know, on the bubble you know, 6-3 suited, or 6-3 off even, or, you know, whatever it may be. This is the only player that we have to, have to, have to call. So, you know, he runs sort of unlucky, but he made the right play again. So anyway, I just want to do those few hands for YouTube, and I will talk to you all later. Remember, this is uh, ManhattanNightForSingleMentors.com, and, you know, we both stake and uh, coach our players. We do not let you play on your own, and uh, so your mistakes are our mistakes. Um, and hopefully you learn a lot very quickly from us. Talk to you all later.